بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين We are continuing with Sermon 1 of Nahj al-Balagha, the Sermon of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam And this is a very important sermon, hence we see al-Sharif al-Radhi. He made it the number one, the first sermon, because it talks about God, talks about the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it talks about the creation of this universe, the creation of Adam, and how the angels were ordered to do sujood, bow to Adam, then we reach the place where Iblis, Satan refused to do sujood to Adam, and then Adam ate from the tree. Once Adam ate from the tree, now Adam, he was brought along with his wife Eve, or Hawa in Arabic, they were brought to the lower worldly earth, the one that we are in right now. So Adam became very regretful, very sad, because he was fooled by Iblis. Of course, we believe that Adam, when he ate from the tree, he did not actually commit a sin. And here, this is a, a difference in philosophy and opinion within the Muslim schools of thought. You find the Shi'i school of thought has one opinion and the Sunni school of thought has a different opinion. The Sunni school of thought says that the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can make minor sins here and there. Not a major sin, a minor sin. They can make it here and there. And they say, for example, the example of Adam eating from the tree, that is a minor sin that Adam committed. We say in the Shi'i school of thought, we say that the prophets and the imams and whoever is appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're appointed by God to represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So would it make sense for Allah to send someone to teach us and guide us? Yet this individual makes mistakes. If this person makes a mistake, then the hujjah, then the proof is not going to be strong. Imagine a principal hires a teacher and the teacher makes mistakes. Can the principal hold the students accountable for the mistakes that they made? Then where's the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And in the Shi'i school of thought, we focus, one of our usul al-deen is the adala of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the justice of God. And the philosophy of our faith, philosophy regarding God, regarding the Prophet, regarding the Imams, it stands on the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we believe in the asma and the infallibility of the prophets and the imams. So how did Adam eat from the tree then? Wasn't that not, was that not a sin? Here we have hadith from the imams of the Ahlul Bayt. They say that this was not a sin. This was breaking the advice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It wasn't a hukum mawlawi. It wasn't a, an absolute rule. It was advice. For example, the doctor tells you don't smoke. If you smoke, you're not going to live a healthy lifestyle. You're, not, you're going to hurt yourself. The doctor is not going to punish you if you smoke. The doctor is telling you for your own good. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Adam for your own good. If you want to stay in the higher paradise, if you want to stay in this place where you're in protection and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting you from the challenges of this low dunya, then don't eat from that tree. The moment you eat from that tree, you're going to be vulnerable. So Adam, he ate from the tree, he became vulnerable, the same way we are all right now. However, was Adam in the eternal paradise? Was Adam in Jannah, the Jannah that everyone, the mu'mineen, the believers will go to? Here, we also have hadith from the imams of the Ahlul Bayt that say that, no, it was a, a place like earth, but he was protected. But it was not Jannah. Is not paradise because Iblis, Satan, cannot enter into paradise. So it was a different realm. And the proof for this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala initially created Adam to be on earth. Adam was not created to be in heaven. Allah says, 
Khalifa. I'm placing a caliph in the land on earth. So Adam was meant to be on earth. This was the way things worked out to be. But initially he, he was here. He was just protected. It was a place, a heaven or a paradise that was similar to earth. But he, he was just protected. The moment he, he ate from the tree, he lost that protection. He was in a pleasant and safe place. So once Adam ate from the tree, he felt very regretful. And we have hadith that Adam began to cry. Adam was very regretful. And he began to cry so much where Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, Al-Bakka'oon khamsa. The criers, the mourners, the weepers are five. Meaning those are people in history who weep the most. They cried the most. He says, Adam, wa Yaqub, wa Yusuf, wa Ali ibn al Hussein, wa Fatima, wa Ali ibn al Hussein. So Adam and Jacob and Joseph and Fatima and Ali, and Ali ibn al Hussein, Zain al Abidin. He says exactly for what reason each one cried, but he says, Fa'amma Adam, innahu baka ala al Jannah, hatta sara ala khaddayhi amthal al Odia. He says, Adam cried for paradise because of in the place that he was in until there was like a valley on his cheek. There was the, the tears, they caused, they caused some like a valley. You know how when the, river, when the river keeps going somewhere, it causes a valley, it causes a, a shift, a, like a, something in between. Similarly, that's what happened to Adam because he cried. See, when we sin, when we do wrong, we don't really feel regrets. Why? Because we don't know how it is to be in paradise. We don't know how it feels to be under the protection of Allah. All that we know is this dunya. But Adam was downgraded. So when you are downgraded, you know what you missed out on. So imagine right now you have the newest iPhone. Someone comes and tells you, now I'm going to give you the iPhone from 10 years ago. Are you going to be happy with that? We're not going to be happy with that because that's a downgrade. If you're being, but you, if you don't know what you're missing out on, you don't know that the, the next, you know, the next series of iPhone, you don't know what the upgrade is. You're going to be like, who cares? You know, let me just live my life however I'm living. But if you know what you're missing out on, then you're going to be very regretful and very sad. So Adam began to repent. The first order of business for Adam was that he has to beg and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says, there were a series of words between Adam and his Lord, and it was because of these words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. So here, Amir al-Mu'mineen, he is explaining, he says, after Adam ate from the tree and he came down, he came down to the slide, um, after he came down, ثُمَّ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ لَهُ فِي تَوْبَتِهِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the tawbah. وَلَقَّاهُ كَلِمَةَ رَحْمَتِهِ Then Allah gave him the word of his rahmah, of his mercy. وَوَعَدَهُ الْمَرَدَّ إِلَى جَنَّتِهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised him that he will be back in the jannah. And then, he says, فَأَهْبَطَهُ إِلَىٰ دَارِ الْبَلِيَّةِ وَتَنَاسِلُ الذُرِّيَّةِ So he says, then Allah offered to Adam, peace be upon him, the chance to repent, taught him words of his mercy, promised him return to his paradise, and sent him down to the place of trial and procreation of progeny. So this sermon is very beautiful because Amir al-Mu'mineen explains everything. He began by explaining God, then the creation, and then creating Adam, and then Iblis not bound to Adam, Adam coming down, and then how Allah forgave Adam. So here, what were the words of Adam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him? Because Allah talks about this. Allah says, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتِ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ there was a series of words between Adam and his Lord. Then Allah forgave him. إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ So here, according to some of the tafsir, it says that he began to say, اللَّهُمَّ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ سُبْحَانَكَ وَبِحَمْدِكْ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي إِنَّكَ خَيْرُ الْغَافِرِينَ This is a dua. Repentance. We are all supposed to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent. 
Allahumma la ilaha illa ant. Oh Allah, there is no Lord other than you. Subhanaka wa bihamdik. All praise and all glory belongs to you. Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi. Oh my Lord, I have oppressed myself. Faghfir li inna ka khayrul ghafirin. Forgive me. You are the best of the uh, forgivers. Now, these are some of the du'as. We also have some narrations from the Ahlul Bayt salam, from the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt. And these are also documented in some Sunni books, such as Ad-Durr al-Manthur by as suyuti a Sunni scholar who has written a tafsir of the Qur'an. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam how to repent because Adam was new. Adam has never committed a sin before. Adam has just brought down, he's fresh. He has just brought down to, to earth. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him, say, it says, he tells him, if you want my forgiveness, then ask me by my best creation, Muhammad wa Ali wa Fatima wa Hassan wa Hussein. And if you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will give you what you want. So Adam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these names. After he says, oh Allah, forgive me, and he repented, then he said, oh Allah, forgive me by the value and by the honor of Muhammad and Ali and Hassan and Hussein and Fatima. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. And this is in the tafsir of this verse. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتِ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ And this is no surprise for us. We repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we repent using the holiest names and the best of creation. By their honor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us because we believe that it's for their, for their sake, for the sake of the most complete human being that God created this dunya. It's for the sake of the most complete human being that Allah made the angels bow to Adam because there is some greatness in Adam and that greatness is Muhammad wa Ali wa Fatima wa Hassan wa Hussein and the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt salam. There's another hadith. It says that Adam, he asked Allah, he says, Oh Allah, by the name of Muhammad and Ali and Hassan and Hussein. So Allah tells him, Oh Adam, where did you see this name before? Because Muhammad and Ali and Hassan Hussein were not even born yet. He tells him, when I saw on the arsh, I saw on the throne, I saw ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. By the name of, there's no God other than Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. So I knew that the name that is associated with Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah, is next to Allah, the name of God. I knew that this name is an honorable name, so I ask you by that name. So Amir al Mu'mineen, he moves on to say, Wastafa subhanahu. من ولده أنبياء أخذ أخذ على الوحي ميثاقهم وعلى تبليغ الرسالة أمانتهم. Then he says, أمير المؤمنين he says, Allah سبحانه وتعالى chose from ولده from the progeny of Adam from his Adam's progeny Allah chose prophets and took their pledge for his revelation and for carrying his message as their trust. وَاصْطَفَى سُبْحَانَهُ مِنْ وَلْدِهِ أَنْبِيَاءَ أَخَذَ عَلَى الْوَحْيِ مِيثَاقُهُمْ They had a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These prophets, they made a covenant, an agreement with God that they deliver the wahi, the revelation of God to the people وَعَلَى تَبْلِيغِ الرَّسَالَةِ أَمَانَتُهُمْ And that they could be trusted to deliver the risala, to deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah talks about this covenant between the prophets and God in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 7. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقَهُمْ وَمِنْكَ وَمِنْ نُوحْ وَإِبْرَاهِيمُ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى بْنِ مَرْيَمُ وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُمْ مِيثَاقًا غَلِيظًا Allah says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ We took from the prophets a covenant. We made a, a covenant, agreement with the prophets. وَمِنْكَ and you, Rasulullah. وَمِنْ نُوح and Noah وَإِبْرَاهِيمْ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُمْ مِلْثَاقًا غَلِيظًا And we took a difficult covenant. The role of the prophets was not easy. They were the best of the creation that Allah has created. And therefore, they were the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to deliver the message and the revelation of Allah truthfully. And they don't betray 
the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, okay, Adam repented. Then Allah made from his progeny prophets. They had a covenant with God. Now he says, why did God send prophets and messengers? What was the purpose of sending prophets and messengers? We believe, according to our narrations, that 124,000 prophets and messengers were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every time, there have been prophets and messengers. So he says, لَمَّا بَدَّلَ أَكْثَرُ خَلْقِهِ أَهْدَ اللَّهِ إِلَيْهِمْ فَجَهِلُوا حَقَّهِ وَاتَّخَذُوا الْأَنْدَادَ مَعَهِ وَاجْتَالَتْهُمُ الشَّيَاطِينَ عَنْ مَعْرِفَتِهِ وَاقْتَطَعَتْهُمْ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ he says, in the course of time, over time, after Adam had progeny and children, and many children and, and the population on earth began to increase, people perverted Allah's trust with them and ignored his position and took compeers along with him, meaning someone, uh, someone who resembled, meaning they associated partners with God, and Satan turned them away from knowing him, turned people away from knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and kept them distant from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So basically, here he says exactly what they did. People, they had a covenant. Not only did the prophets have a covenant with God, we, the people, we had a covenant with God. When was this covenant? This covenant was in the realm of the spirits, in the realm of particles and spirits. Before we came into our existence as a body, our souls have been existing. Our, our soul was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much before we were born. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمْ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ Here's the, in Surah 7, verse 172. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمْ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here the verse says, and mention when your Lord took from the children of Adam from their loins, their descendants, and made them testify of themselves, saying to them, am I not your Lord? They say, yes, we have testified. When was this? This was our souls. Before we came into existence, we had a covenant with God. Every single soul, even the soul of the atheist, the one who does not believe in God, the soul acknowledged that, yes, you are our Lord. So here, the Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, Once people, they turned against the covenant that they had with God. And ignored the position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they began to associate partners with God. And the Satans brought people away from God, away from knowing God. And they stopped people from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah sent prophets and messengers. So these were the reasons why God sent prophets and messengers. When people turned against their covenant, they stopped worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They didn't know the position of Allah. They started associating partners. They were fooled by shaitan. Then Allah sent Prophets and messengers. فَبَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رُسُولَهُ Then Allah sent His messengers. وَوَتَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ أَنْبِيَاءَهُ And He sent His prophets toward them. Why? لِيَسْتَأْدُوهُمْ مِيثَاقَ فِطْرَتِهِ To fulfill the pledges of His creation. Because people, as we mentioned, they had a pledge with God. So now the prophets, they come and they remind people of the pledge that they had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they remind people, they recall to them the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they encourage them to worship and do good preaching. Basically, the prophets, they do good preaching and they worship, they they. They encourage others to do good preaching and invite people to do the good. And they reveal to them what is hidden in the wisdom, what is hidden in the intellect. And they show people the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are these signs? 
فَوْقَهُمْ مَرْفُوعٌ From a, a sky that has been raised upon, up, up, up above them. وَمِحَادِ تَحْتُهُمْ مَوْضُوعٌ And the earth that is placed beneath them. وَمَعَايِشْ تُحْيِيهِمْ And the means and the living that sustain them. وَآجَالْ تَفْنِيهِمْ And the deaths that make them die. And the elements that turn them old and incidents that successively betake them. I'm going to read the whole thing, the whole English translation, and then we will explain it. So he says, after people started turning against the covenant of Allah, in, in the course of the time people perverted Allah's trust with them and ignoring his position and took uh, compeers along with him, Satan turned them away from knowing him and kept them distant from his worship. Then Allah sent his messengers and his prophets toward them to get them to fulfill the pledges of his creation, to recall to them his bounties, to exhort them by preaching, to unveil, to unveil before them the hidden virtues of wisdom and show them the signs of his omnipotence, namely the sky which is raised over them, the earth that is placed beneath them, the means of living that sustain them, deaths that make them die, ailments that turn them old, and incidents that successively betake them. So this is the job of the prophets. What is the t if someone asks you, why did God send prophets and messengers? Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says exactly why. He says, fulfill the pledges of creation in the realm of particles. Because we have made a pledge with God before we came into existence. So now we, to fulfill that pledge, we made a pledge with God that we won't worship anyone other than God and we will worship God. In this life, we kind of diverted from our course. So God sent prophets and messengers to guide us. Second, to recall to them his bounties. The task of the prophets is to tell people, look at this bounty that God has given you. Thank God. Appreciate the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what the, the task of the prophets. And then, They do tabliq, meaning that they preach to people. Preach to people, inviting people back to good, inviting people back to God. This is the task of the prophets. The prophets of Allah, they would preach to, preach to people. They would show people the way. They would guide people. And of course, the preaching of the prophets is very different from the way people preach today. Today, some people, they preach in a way that it's totally against God and totally against the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says exactly how we should preach. Invite for the sake of your Lord with wisdom, with good admonishment. And if you have to debate, then debate in the best way possible. This, way, this was the way of the prophets. Through a merciful way, through a peaceful way, through a loving and compassionate way. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he was a merciful man. Jesus was a merciful man. Moses was a merciful man. Abraham, Dawood, Sulaiman, all of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today some people, in the name of God, they come and they kill and they oppress and they abuse, thinking that they are doing something good. No. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, عَلَيْهِمْ بِالتَّبْلِيغِ Meaning that the, the tabliq, when they admonish people, when they preach, that is the hujjah upon people. No one could come and say, oh, you didn't tell me, you didn't say this, you didn't say that. No, because they are complete in the way they invite people. And fourth, وَيُثِيرُوا لَهُمْ دَفَائِنَ الْعُقُولِ They reveal to them the hidden virtues of wisdom. See, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with an internal navigation system. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and created us in a way where we can be guided. But sometimes that internal navigation system, it's covered and covered and covered by bad things, by wrong things in this life where we are steered away from the right path. Everyone is created pure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, see the Islamic philosophy towards people and creation is that everyone's created pure. See, in, for example, in Christianity, they say, no, you are a sinner. There's an original sin. You need to cleanse yourself in order to be pure. 
No, in Islam, Islam tells us we are pure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us pure. But over time, attachments to this dunya, life, materialism, all of these things, they bring people away from God. We have a hadith that says that every single son of Adam is created a Muslim. What does Muslim mean? Muslim means submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't worship anyone other than God. And then the hadith says, their parents, they, they change them. They change their religion. So when a child is born, they're ma'soom. They're infallible. Then as they get older, their, their parents, they come and they bring them away. And they, they alter their perspective and they alter their thinking. So the task of the prophets is, They come and they, they reveal what is already hidden in the, in, in the, in the mind, in the intellect. It's already there. They don't create new concepts. The prophets didn't come and invent new concepts. They just came and they, they come and they make you, they reveal what's already within us. And the fifth, he says, they show them the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيُرُوهُمْ آيَاتِ الْمَقْدِرَةِ They show them the signs of God. So they tell people, this is a sign of God. This is a sign of God. Sometimes we need to look at the signs of God Maybe we look at the sign every day, but we don't think about it. So he says, he says, namely, the sky which is raised over them. How is the sky above you? What's holding it? What's holding the clouds? Clouds that are filled with rain. We talked about this in the previous sessions ago. Clouds that are filled with tons and tons of rain. They're held up and they're floating in the sky. What's holding it up? The earth that is placed beneath them. This earth is filled with resources. It's filled with minerals. It has so, so many things. The means of living that sustain them. You have the grass and the trees and the fruits and all of these things that grow from the earth. Deaths that make them die. Death, that's a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that every single person dies is proof that there is someone who's in control and someone that has a system and no one is able to escape from that system. Ailments that turn them old and incidents that successively betake them. Eventually we get old. There's a system. Today you're young. In five years, in 10 years, in 20 years, you're going to get older. And these are, all, these are all signs that there's a system in this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. So Amir al-Mu'mineen talks about this. And then he taught, he says, لم يخل الله سبحانه خلقه من نبي مرسل أو كتاب منزل أو حجة لازمة أو محجة قائمة رسل لا تقصر بهم قلة عددهم ولا كثرة المكذبين لهم من سابق سمي له من بعده أو غابر عرفه 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 Man qablah. So he says that, he, he, Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says that Allah never allowed his creation to remain without a prophet. What does this mean? This means that the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constant. It never comes to an end. There has always been a prophet deputized by him, meaning chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or a book sent down from him, or a binding argument or a standing plea. These messengers were such that they did not feel little because of smallness of their number or of largeness of the number of their falsifiers. Among them was either a predecessor who would name the one to follow or the follower who had been introduced by the predecessor. So here, Amir al-Mu'mineen is trying to explain this concept that God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just create and tell people, you know what, you guys go and figure things out on your own. No. Allah, in, in Surah Al-A'la, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Sabbih isma rabbika al-A'la, alladhi khalaqa fasawwa, walladhi qaddara fahada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, but Allah placed the guidance, the continuing guidance. You know, right now, they, you know, someone creates a, they make a car, they make something, and then that's it. The, you, you, they sell the car, and the, the car is, that's it. They don't do anything. 
Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has continuous guidance, meaning that Allah did not only create, but Allah is constantly guiding us. How does Allah guide us? He gave us the intellect. But in addition to that, لم يخل الله سبحانه خلقه من نبي مرسل There has always been a Nabi Mursal, a prophet chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. من نبي مرسل أو كتاب منزل Or a divine book which guides people. أو حجة لازمة Or a proof from God. And this is here in the tafsir. We, say, we understand that these are the, the proofs after the prophet. So Moses, he was a prophet, but when he would leave people, he had awsiyah, he had individuals who would explain the message of Jesus, the, the message of Moses. Similarly, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah, he has 12 imams who are the awsiyah. They are the divine leaders after the prophets. And these are the hujja lazima aw mahajja qa'ima. The mahajja qa'ima is the holy path taught by the prophets and the imams. So this is the sunnah, meaning right now we say the mahajja, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is that he taught us to do this and taught us to do that. This is something that upholds people, that guides people back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, ala dhalik nasalat al-qurun wa madat al-duhur wa salafat al-aba wa khalafat al-abna. He says, this was the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this way, ages passed by and times rolled on. Fathers passed away while sons took their places. Meaning that prophet after prophet, messenger after messenger, book, wasi, nabi, or, uh, nabi or wasi. Either a prophet or someone who, who explains the message of the prophet, the sunnah of the prophets, the books sent by Allah ever since Adam until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and here, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in place. Now, someone might say, if I have the intellect, why do I need divine guidance? Why do I need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send prophets and messengers? The answer is that we need the prophets to guide us and fix our moral compass. Yes, God created us. But today, look at people. People, they have the intellect. They are veered off. They are steered off the right track. And we need reminders. What gives us morality and ethics and what gives us success and that shows us the right path is religion. And this is why we are in need of religion. We are in need of divine guidance. Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kadhim, the seventh imam, he tells one of his companions, he says, Ya Hisham, inna Allah, inna lillahi ala nas hujjatayn. There are two proofs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to people. And he will hold people accountable based on these two proofs. Hujjatun lahira wa hujjatun batana. There is an apparent proof and there is a hidden proof. Fa'amma lahira. As for the apparent proof, farrusul wal anbiya wal a'amma. They are the messengers, the prophets, and the imams. They are what's apparent in front of people. And as for the hidden proof that God has for everyone is the intellect. So no one on the day of judgment can say, oh, why did you not tell me that killing is bad? Allah will say, no, you have the intellect. You were born knowing that oppression is wrong, that killing, that abusing, that stealing, that doing wrong things. This is bad. You don't even need a prophet. But in addition to that, we have sent prophets and messengers. Thou shall not kill. Jesus, Moses, Abraham, uh, all of the prophets, they knew this, and they, they preach this to their people. Now, another proof is that there's a system. He says, Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, Ala dhalika nasalat al -qurun. It was based on this system that the, the, the life passed on and ages passed, and father after father after son, they all inherit. This was the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is one of the major proofs that we have for Imam al-Mahdi. Imam al-Mahdi, we believed since Adam all the way until Imam al-Hasan al-Askari, that there has to be a hujjah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. Or for those who don't believe in the Imams of the Anbayt, from Adam all the way until Rasulullah. And even if they don't believe in them, there's hadith from Rasulullah, he says there's going to be a hujjah there's going to be a proof of God, a living proof of God until the day of judgment. This is in Sunni hadith. So we say it's the Imams of the Anbayt until Imam al Hassan al Askari. Okay, Imam al Hassan al Askari died. What's from the time Imam al 
Hassan al-Askari passed away until now, until the day of judgment. Who's the proof of God? The proof of God is an imam, a living imam. We don't have to necessarily see this imam, but the imam is there. This is why we have la takhlul ard min hujjah. We have this hadith that the earth has to always have a hujjah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here, Amir al muminin is saying this is the system of God. The system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always placed a hujjah, a representative of God on earth. Now, who, are, who is the hujjah? This is, he says, until Rasulullah. There has always been a hujjah until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. إِلَىٰ أَنْ بَعَثَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ مُحَمَّدًا صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ لِإِنْجَازَ عِدَّتِهِ وَتَمَامَ نُبُوَّتِهِ وَمَأْخُوذًا مَأْخُوذًا عَلَى النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقَهُ مَشْهُورَةً سِمَاتُهُ كَرِيمًا مِيلَادُهُ وَأَهْلُ الْأَرْضِ يَوْمَئِذٍ مِلَلٌ مُتَفَرِّقَةٌ وَأَهْوَاءٌ مُنْتَشِرَةٌ وَطَرَائِقٌ متشتتة بين مشبه لله بخل بين مشبه لله بخلقه أو ملحد في اسمه أو مشير إلى غيره فهداهم به من الضلالة وأنقذهم بما كانت بما كانه من الجهالة. He says after prophet after prophet until Allah deputized Muhammad peace be upon him and his progeny as his prophet in fulfillment. of his promise and in completion of his prophethood. His pledge had been taken from the prophets. His traits of character were well reputed and his birth was honorable. The people of the earth at this time were divided in different parties. Their aims were separate and their ways were diverse. They either likened Allah with his creation or twisted his names or turned to else than him Through Muhammad, Allah guided them out of wrong and with his efforts took them out of ignorance. So this is what the Qur'an says, what Amir al-Mu'min is saying, what the Qur'an says, هو الذي بعث في الأمين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين. He said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet someone who مأخوذاً He says, لِإِنْجَازِ عِدَّتِهِ وَتَمَامِ نُبُوَّتِهِ Because this is the covenant of God and this is the, this is the, the, the uh, to complete the, prophet, the, the prophethood because Rasulullah is the final messenger. مَأْخُوذًا عَلَى النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقُهُ All of the prophets, they told people about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa From Adam all the way until Jesus, they told people that the final messenger is going to be Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa مشهورة سماته. His traits are known. كريما ميلاده. His birth is honorable. وأهل الأرض. And here, Amir al-Mu'minin is talking about the birth of Rasulullah. And this is one of the proofs why we should celebrate the birth of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله. وأهل الأرض يوم إذن ملل متفرقة. And the people of the earth were divided in different parties. وأهواء منتشرة. And different aims. وطرائق متشتتة. And they were diverse. They were people were different between بَيْنَ مُشَبِّهٍ لِلَّهِ بِخَلْقِهِ. They either likened Allah with His creation, so they would look at the sun and the moon, and they said, "This is God." أو ملحد في اسمه. Or they would they would give the name of God to idols. They called the idol اللات والعزة ومنات. And these names, they gave them. They gave them names of God to their idols, and they would give their idols names of God. So he says, or those who did not even care about God and they worship other than Allah, like those who worship the cow and the sun and the moon and the stars. Then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided people out of wrong and with his effort. took them out of ignorance. ثُمَّ اخْتَارَ سُبْحَانَهُ لِمُحَمَّدٍ Then he talks about the death of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله. ثُمَّ اخْتَارَ سُبْحَانَهُ لِمُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وآله لِقَاءَهُ وَرَضِيَ لَهُ مَا عِنْدَهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ مِنْ دَارِ الدُّنْيَا وَرَغِبَ بِهِ مِنْ مُقَارَنَةِ الْبَلْوَى فَقَبَضَهُ إِلَيْهِ كَرِيمًا صلى الله عليه وآله. Then Allah chose for Muhammad Peace be upon him, 
and his progeny to meet him, meaning to die and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we die, when we leave this life, we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqih. To meet him, selected him for his own nearness, meaning he brought him closer to Allah, regarded him too dignified to remain in this world. Rasulullah was too dignified to remain in this low dunya and decided to remove him from this place of trial. Then the, this dunya of test was an end. So when someone dies, when a believer dies, we shouldn't be sad because this person is going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This person is being removed from this life of trials and tribulations and they have submitted their test. So he drew him towards himself with honor. Allah may shower his blessings on him and his progeny. وَخَلَفَ فِيكُمْ مَا خَلَّفَتِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ فِي أُمَمِهَا إِذْ لَمْ يَتْرُكُوهُمْ هَمَلًا بِغَيْرِ طَرِيقٍ وَاضِحٍ وَلَا عَلَمٍ قَائِمٍ Here, he talks about what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi left behind. Meaning that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi he left, he left this world the same way all of the prophets left. How did the prophets leave? They say, who's after me? What's going to happen? All of the prophets, before they die, they tell people, this is after me, do this. This is my wasiyah, this is my work. You see that Muslims, they accept this with all of the prophets, with all of the leaders, except Rasulullah. Today, Muslims, the majority of them, except the Shia, they say Rasulullah died without giving a will without leaving the world, without telling people who to follow after him. He died, and that's it. He tells them, you know what? You guys decide your matters. You guys decide your issues. Is this, is, is this, does this show what kind of a person Rasulullah was? Like only a careless person would do this. Amir al-Mu'mineen is saying, no, Rasulullah, he died the same way all of the prophets died. They tell people exactly what's after them, what's going on, and they guide people. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he guided people. He guided people and he tells people who is after me. I'm leaving behind the book of Allah and my Ahl al-Bayt. On the day of Ghadir, he tells people about Amir al-Mu'mineen. Here, we're going to stop because this requires more explanation. And we will continue in the next session with this. وَخَلَّفَ فِيكُمْ مَا خَلَّفَتِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ فِي أُمَمِهَا he left behind with the same way the prophets they left their with with their people. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.